Today, we're going to look at the MQTT protocol. So it's a way of communication between microcontrollers and uh, brokers. Um, so what we're going to look at is in particular Mosquito Broker. So it, uh, it's a broker that can be easily hosted on Raspberry Pi. So uh, the effective cost and the CPU overhead is very low. Um, so basically, this means that this is quite useful for DIY, DIY enthusiasts who wants to create a centralized broker to do their IoT applications. So how do we use this uh, Mosquito Broker in our IoT applications is, let's say you have two microcontrollers. So one of them can publish messages to a certain topic and another microcontroller can subscribe to that particular topic. So here each color represents a topic. So which means that only this guy can can publish to this particular topic and this guy can only subscribe to this particular topic and you can subscribe to multiple topics but that's a different um, scenario in this case let's say you have an amazon echo that can use home assistant to send an mqtt message to a certain topic and another node mcu or esp8266 can subscribe to this particular topic and turn on a light so which means that you can easily turn on a light using Amazon Alexa, uh, using Home Assistant and Mosquito. Uh, another scenario could be that you have a microcontroller with a PIR sensor, which can uh, publish to a certain topic. And the same microcontroller can also subscribe to this particular topic that's in yellow and turn on the light. So which means that if there's a motion, you can easily turn on the light. So basically the Mosquito um, behaves as a broker, which means that everything sends messages to uh, the Mosquito broker. And there's a centralized protocol, which is the MQTT protocol that it uses to communicate. So this is very useful for Internet of Things. So it's, think of it like an SMS for microcontrollers. So if you subscribe to a topic, if you're in a group, you get that particular message to all the members in the group. So um, it's very useful for communication between the microcontrollers. So the main um, crux of doing DIY electronics, uh, IoT things is basically communication between microcontrollers and MQTT broker. But if I were a hacker or if someone uh, who has malicious intent could spoof a server, so which means that it behaves as a server in between and it can intercept all your messages. So this means that um, what they can do is they can say that, hey, it is me, uh, whatever is your server and uh, all the messages will go there and they can keep a copy of it and then forward all the messages to your uh, certain server. So there's nothing that we can do to uh, prevent this. Uh, other, the only way we can do uh, the protection is use something called an SSL certificate. So which means that this certificate is only given to one client. So in your case, a uh, Mosquito client on a Raspberry Pi. And only if you have the certificate, you can then do the communication. The problem is uh, the hackers can't get this certificate. So that is really good. So we are not going to have a man in the middle attack uh, if we uh, secure our MQTT server using an SSL certificate. So SSL certificates are of two types. So first we'll discuss uh, what SSL certificate uh, is when you can actually sign it yourself. So basically what you're telling the internet is, trust me, I'm signing this. Um, so basically this is a self-signed certificate. So we'll look into that first. So here, uh, what you can do is you can go and see a script that is already written by uh, creators of phone track. It's an app for tracking yourself on um, the map, uh, which is also integrated in Home Assistant. So if you want to uh, go and look into that particular project, but here uh, they have a script which actually downloads uh, the root certificate, that is it creates these certificates and you can sign it yourself. So there are like many steps involved and what they have done is they have written it into the generate-ca.sh. So all you do is uh, go to your Raspberry Pi and download this particular script um, and then uh, create an uh, host list. So host list is a list of hosts that you're going to expose outside. So it could be uh, your DNS uh, name, that is your uh, outside name of your server that you're going to expose to the internet and then um, give the executive permissions to the generate uh, hyphen ca.sh and then just execute this. So this takes uh, a few seconds and it uh, creates your uh, self-signed server certificates. Um, so when you do an LS, you will see the six files and we are only interested in the ca.crt, raspberry pi.crt, raspberry pi.key. So Raspberry Pi is actually the host name uh, for the Raspberry Pi that I was using. That's why it 
uh, creates these files. This could be different depending on the host name that you give for your Raspberry Pi. So all we need are these three certificates. Um, so now you can use these three certificates later on. I will show you how to use these three certificates to actually secure your uh, server. But the other way that is the, um, the trusted way to do this is actually use Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is free. You don't have to pay the certificate authority to generate um, the certificates, the SSL certificate. If you buy it from, let's say, uh, uh, ISP client or from a uh, lot of domain providers or from Google, you're going to pay a few uh, uh, like dollars in order to buy this SSL certificate, but this is free and you um, get this, uh, renew the certificate every 90 days. And it's trusted, which means that um, you get that um, the lock icon on your um, uh, server that you're trying to expose. So, uh, so it is a better way of uh, securing your server so here uh, when you go to let's encrypt uh, website um, they have a link to um, this program called certbot uh, which you can install on raspberry pi and download um, and uh, generate these certificates for this you have to use your router to do certain things expose the port 443 in order for it to do some uh, manual um, checks or automatic checks depending on how you set up your um, environment all that is uh, Put in this particular website, which is uh, which can be obtained easily. Uh, but in my case, I didn't even have to do that. I use an ASUS router, and the ASUS router is able to get uh, Let's Encrypt um, uh, certificates every 90 days for me. So all I have to do is just click on um, Export. So here I get two files. It's called cert.pem, key.pem, and this is very specific to ASUS. I just uh, renamed it to Raspberry Pi CRT Raspberry Pi key. So these are exactly the same thing, except that this is generated through Let's Encrypt. Um, so here, how you would extract um, the CA certificate is very simple. Let's say you use these certificates for hosting Home Assistant or uh, some kind of web interface like Apache or uh, uh, NGX or something like that. So basically, all you have to do is right click on it and click on Certificate. Um, then um, uh, you will uh, go into the details tab and click on uh, copy to file and then uh, select base 64 encoded and then do next and um, it will save it as ca.cer and you just rename it to ca.crt. So this is your CA certificate if you use the let's, let's encrypt uh, um, way of uh, exposing your uh, home computer to the outside world. And the next thing that you can do is also extract the root CA certificate. The root CA certificate is actually the root portion of your certificate. So go to your certification path and then click on this, the topmost portion. So basically, this is until 2021. So until 2021, you don't have to uh, download uh, or recheck. This particular certificate is generated every 90 days, which means you have to update your microcontrollers every 90 days. Instead, you can just um, check for the root certificate because no one else is going to get this particular IP and this particular domain name from this um, root uh, uh, authority. So basically all you have to do is then click on view certificate and then this will open a new certificate and then you just do the same procedure, copy to file and save it as base64 encoded. So we will call this Adreno underscore root underscore CA underscore check dot CER. Okay. Um, so here uh, let's now look into how to get Mosquito going on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so you can either use a Raspberry Pi W, um, W stands for wireless, um, uh, and or you can use the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, this is uh, this doesn't require way too much computation power or uh, memory or RAM, so you can even get away with running on a Raspberry Pi 0 W um, instead of a Raspberry Pi 3. But here, this can be just one stop location where you can have Home Assistant and other um, IoT stuff going in parallel with your mosquito broker and the whole goal now is to put these certificates on your mosquito server so on the mosquito server first um, to install this on your raspberry pi update your um, using apt get and then install mosquito and mosquito clients and then enable the mosquito service um, so then copy these certificates into the location in the mosquito folder and then give the ownership to mosquito for these certificates and then create a password so you're creating a password in the, in this case it's 
MIOT uh, as a username, and then it'll ask you for a password. So use this command to create a password. And then to go and open slash etc mosquito and mosquito.conf, and then add these following lines. So here, the first line over here says that when you're on localhost, listen to port 1883, which is insecure. And when you're listening to 8883, then use these certificates. Um, and uh, you can use uh, web sockets protocol. In that case, you would use port 9883 and use these certificates for the web sockets protocol as well. So um, after you have done this, uh, save this file uh, and then restart uh, or start your Mosquito service. Also remember that you need to expose this to the outside world as well. So basically um, you select the IP that you want, uh, that is your IP of your Raspberry Pi and expose these two ports uh, WebSockets and your uh, MQTT. If you're not going to use WebSocket, don't expose this. Um, just expose a, a MQTT SSL uh, port. So uh, uh, Andrew Spice has already created a video on how to use uh, SSL certificates to get uh, HTTP uh, services or, and then also get information from HTTPS. So he suggested that you start uh, converting all your Arduino file from or Wi-Fi client or Wi-Fi client secure. And the good thing is it works on both ESP32 and uh, ESP8266, but I've been having issues. So if I use Wi-Fi client secure um, or to connect uh, the particular client to MQTT, it just crashes on ESP8266, doesn't work at all on ESP32. So here I'm going to show you what are the different ways or new ways to actually do this. Um, so, in the ESP8266 case, we're going to use the newly created bare SSL Wi-Fi client uh, protocol uh, that has been uh, uh, recently uh, included in the staging version of ESP8266 and also the uh, latest release version as well. Um, so here um, we're going to use the Bior SSL Wi-Fi client secure and um, we're going to do a two-way handshake. So basically remember the Arduino root CA checked our certificate. So let's uh, download that particular file onto your computer. And then in ESP32, you just put it as a constant care uh, parameter over here as a root certificate. Um, and then you can just include this line net.setCA uh, cert and then this particular name over here. And this way you can actually then do your MQTT uh, connection. So what it will do is every time it does the MQTT connection, it's going to double check if the server is exposing this particular root certificate, that is the uh, 2021 certificate, the longer time certificate. Um, you can also then use this static uh, character um, on your program memory for ESP8266, and then you can then load it into your bad SSL certificate, and then say net.setrust uh, anchors, and give the address for this particular certificate. So this way, Bear SSL will also use the certificate every time that it does the connection using MQTT. So we can also do the two-way handshake using uh, the CA certificate. So you just take the CA certificate, use open SSL to get the public key out of it. So basically you just use this particular command and whatever public key is uh, returned, you just put in here, um, on ESP8266, and then you can uh, use the bare SSL and say this is a public key and set set known key. So this way, this key is loaded onto your bare SSL. So every time it does check, it's going to check for this particular public key. Okay, so the last way to actually check uh, for authenticity is to check the fingerprint. Um, so basically, you can get the fingerprint from the CA certificate by using this particular command. And then whatever uh, this command spits out, you can then put that value in here. And uh, you can use this particular command net.setfingerprintfp. So every time um, the bad SSL connects to the server, it's going to check for this particular fingerprint. But fingerprints have been shown to be um, an issue because what's going to happen is a lot of servers keep changing this fingerprint. So this may or may not work for all cases. So on platform IO, I have opened uh, two different versions. So on this side is an ESP8266 version. On this side is ESP32 version. So the idea is again, 
uh, loading these certificates, like I mentioned here, and uh, use bear SSL uh, to either check for CA or the, uh, the public key or the fingerprint, or uh, just use net.insecure. So basically, um, this way you can communicate uh, to an MQTT using the Wi-Fi client uh, secures bear SSL uh, protocol to um, use on um, using the MQTT library. So MQTT uh, library is now uh, the Arduino MQTT library can be used with this particular client. You can also use PubSub client as well. So I've included the links to these two different versions um, in GitHub and um, in ESP32 case, uh, we are going to use an older version of Wi-Fi client secure. The latest Wi-Fi client secure is not working with um, MQTT. If someone has a, uh, found a way to actually make this work, um, let me know. Uh, I'll put the correct links. Um, as well. Uh, so here, uh, again, we're doing the same kind of uh, um, check. So here we use the Wi-Fi client secure, and then we set this certificate, and then every time it does the connection, it checks for the certificate. You can use this with PubSub uh, Pub client as well as uh, the MQTT um, versions as well. Again, all these um, codes are on GitHub. I'm going to leave the links below. So go ahead and try it. Let's connect uh, ESP32 and ESP8266 uh, to our MQTT broker.